gets me through my morning every day. Every morning. Ladies and gentlemen, Adelaide's Jody and Hazy on Nova. G'day, folks. I have a dream. <laughs> it's a recurring dream, and it was leading up to Nova's Handball Blitz, where I'd try and make a quick getaway from job A to job B, but every time I get to my car, it would be on bricks. Yeah, and do you know what's really, really intense when someone calls up and goes, I know what your dreams mean, and mm. this means you're going to get sacked. Yeah, That's and I was like, <laughs> wow. And I looked over at the boss, and he just shrugged his shoulders with a bit of a smile on his face. I'm like, okay, that's radio, though, for you, Yeah, isn't that's radio. Classic. Oh, can't it change in an instant, you guys? <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. This will be my last podcast. <laughs> Keep on having these recurring dreams. <laughs> it's really, really quite strange. And please get involved. 13, 24, 10. If you've got one of those really, really weird recurring dreams, mm. tell us about it. Mm. Because... Can anyone make sense of these things? Absolutely not. I've got one that I'll tell you about in just a moment, but I want to hear yours first, please. Yeah, well, we started probably, I reckon, about six weeks ago when I started um, dreaming about Nova's handball blitz. <laughs> <laughs> Top priority in my brain. And in order to have this recurring dream that I'd have to, at one stage, I, I thought I'd have to make a quick getaway from Nova's handball bits to get to Channel 7. Yeah. And that I'd park my cart in a, a specific spot near Adelaide Oval and I'd come out to drive off and it would be on bricks. Mm. So the wheels are being stolen, mm-hmm. and then several times I would have to really, really knuckle down and say I'm not having a crack of Port Adelaide supporters, no. <laughs> suggesting that maybe they'll steal my wheels. <laughs> but why am I having this dream? Yeah, it's odd, isn't it? Consistently. And then again last night, and this is a dream that I've had consistently from about the age of 14, I dreamt that I made my AFL debut. Oh, <laughs> so it's so sad, isn't it's it? It's so sad. It's unbelievably sad. But... Inside, and it happens every single time. Last night, for whatever reason, I, I debuted for the Melbourne Demons. Yeah, right. Which is strange, over at Marvel Stadium. Yeah. <laughs> and then every single time, it's like, righto, boys, we're going out. We've got 10 minutes to go. Put your boots on. And I'll look down at my boots, and there'll be either be one missing. Yeah. Or I'll go to put them on, and they'll be two or three sizes too small. Oh, my God. So then it's a mad rush to find boots. Yeah. And then sometimes a game starts, and I still haven't found boots. And they're yeah. like, well, we can't go on until you get your boots. Yeah. And then by then, I wake up. Oh, right. So what the hell is going on? 13, 24, 10, if you're a dream interpreter also, we'd love to hear what this all means. Am I about to get drafted? No. <laughs> is that what's happening here? No. I'm reading the cues. No. <laughs> so that that almost became a reality for me the other day when I got out to Golden Grove for a dance concert and we get in the car park and my daughter goes to me, I've left my costumes at home. Oh, oh really? We only live 25 minutes away yeah, and you're on good, stage in 45 minutes. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's a good, good fun rush, isn't it? Um, yeah, recurring dreams, they're funny, aren't they? So you, you've got a consistent one? I have the same one, um, that I am constantly trying to get to the airport for a flight and I can't oh, get yeah. there. And I'm tr- madly trying to pack and I'm madly trying to like hail a, a, a cab or an Uber and I just cannot get to the airport for the flight. Yeah. I don't know what it means. Maybe it's my life spiralling, you know, inextricably out of control and I have no, you know, coping mechanisms for it. That's yeah. what I did. Well, I, I just I just love how I keep on dreaming that I'm scared that I'll be late uh, and miss the start of a radio show. Yeah. But you're living my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. You've never been late. No. That's the other one I have too is that I'm on camera or on radio and I don't know what to say. Yeah. I've got like the auto cue goes down or, <laughs> or, or or you're trying to write notes and your pen doesn't work and stuff like that. Yeah. I think those dreams are your subconscious fears maybe. Yeah. I don't is know. This, at least uh, if my hands still work and I can't speak, I'm like, oh, just press something. <laughs> oh. <laughs> There we go. And everything's okay. Fill in the blanks there. Everything's right. Hazy. Yeah. The dream may indicate that there is a situation or relationship in your life that may be potentially destructive. Mm, I'll tell you what it is. It's about losing boots and and trying to fight and look for them. Okay. I know exactly what the relationship is. (laughs) We have a 15-year-old dog at home (laughs) that has weed on the floorboards to such a degree that there's several floorboards that need to be replaced. They're almost soggy with dog wee. That's the relationship that you think is causing you to dream about your football boots. I think, I think that is the strained relationship that I've got in my life right now. Does Cara know that you stepped over the big puddle in the kitchen the <laughs> no, other morning? No. She does now. She does now. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how's the timing? She must have done a wee as soon as I left. <laughs> oh, can we take this call here, please? This is Bryony from Playford. Hi, Bryony. Bryony? Hi, how are you going, guys? Right, good. Um, are you interpreting our dreams? What's what's going on here? Oh, I'm going to have a stab at it. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to say the reason between um, 
you feeling pulled from the radio and pulled to Channel 7 is around the idea that you're not sure about your career choices and thinking that you need to make another move. But then when you go to your car and your tyres are stolen, yep. someone has stolen the decision from you and you're feeling pulled about your time in life and where you're making priorities. Wow. wow. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Bronnie, are you saying I should never have left SEN? <laughs> <laughs> Saying that you're feeling some turmoil within yourself, then there's just some reflection about what's really important. Wow. Wow, that's good. Oh, that's huge. That's good. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, Bronny. Oh, Bronny, do you do this for a living or what? No. <laughs> no, she's just a casual dream interpreter. Wow, okay. That's great. That's <laughs> Thank you, Bronny. Um, in- no worries. <laughs> so, 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 did Bronny suggest that you know the the decision of whether you're doing Channel Seven or Nova will be taken out of your hands? Yeah. Well, in a completely unrelated note, our Josh, <laughs> our boss Josh, just has requested a meeting with you by yourself. Up oh my show. god! I can see t- so clearly now. <laughs> Is the turmoil because you don't know if you're man or horse? That's yes. Like I, would like to know. I think that's the big one. You don't know if you're actually man or horse. <laughs> horse has been. <laughs> Can't it be both? The, the head of a man on a horse's body? <laughs> 13, 24, 10. Do you have a recurring dream? Can you help us with ours? Yeah. Get involved, please. All right, let's go. <laughs> Text line's going off. 0400 919 919. Uh, talking about recurring dreams, I dream at least once a month that my dog gets out and I have to chase her down the street. When I finally catch up to it, isn't my dog? That's from Ange in Oakland's Park. Oh, Ange. Oh, Whose right. dog is it then? <laughs> okay. Whose dog you chasing All down right. the street? Calm down, Ange. Oh, let's go to uh, producer Zoe here. Good morning. What you got? I constantly, like at least once every couple of months, either dream that I'm on stage doing a show and I've forgotten my lines. Yes. Or I've rocked up to school naked and no one notices except me. But I haven't been in school for eight See, years. <laughs> and the thing about that, Jodes, and we're, we're going to lift the lid here, oh, there's God. been a few times where you have turned up to work naked. <laughs> <laughs> and we're so polite. We go, oh, oh, yeah. Jones, it's always oh, naked again. again. <laughs> Don't make a big deal of it, okay? No. Just pretend like everything is normal. Yeah, yeah. And the remarkable thing about that is Zoe turns up to work naked. She's still got a job and you're still <laughs> yeah, getting fired. Isn't that incredible? Wow. <laughs> I'm getting fired probably because I'm not Zoe. naked. Is that what's going on here? Zoe, if you dream you were naked at work or school, it may mean that this is the area in which you feel most insecure. You're afraid you're not qualified oh. and you're not going to live up to expectations. Oh, that's Whoa. valid. Totally valid. You know that probably yeah. makes sense then, doesn't Boom. it? <laughs> <laughs> I was such a goody two-shoes in school, that makes sense. I used to dream in school that I'd forgotten my blazer and I had to call mum and mum was really upset. Yeah. So... Nerd stuff, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Solid nerd stuff. Hey, um, Abby, you are the dream interpreter. Well, Google is, but I'm just reading off Google. But I love this stuff. I yeah. think it's great. What about you? What's your recurring dream? Um, I have one where I'm being chased. I used to have one a lot. I was being chased and then when they got me, they'd like be over me and I could never see their face. And then as they were like trying to off me, yes. I would wake up. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. So, so I'm no dream interpreter, but I can say that's not a dream. That was your Saturday night. <laughs> well, Hazy, you could go to the gym or do the shopping or go to work. But what if you went in a beachier direction? You're only a what if away from a holiday with the What If app. Book accommodation, flights, packages and more. What if it's Aussie for travel? When pranks have gone extremely wrong. I love this. Mm. I, I mean, who doesn't love a practical joke? Oh, am I right? Just to get you up and about. What about this? An unidentified man was arrested last Thursday for placing 12 kilos of dynamite in two cars belonging to another man. The two individuals knew each other prior to the incident. Despite the date being August, the man insisted it was a prank. (laughs) The dynamite and detonators were confiscated and police don't consider it a terrorist attack due to the man's claims. He's probably going to go to jail for two years in Finland. Okay, can you break this down? What what was going through his head and what exactly did he do? He was going to be like, hey, hey mate, hey. Hey, open up your car. (laughs) Yes! 12 kilos of dynamite. How good. It's just a joke. Pick up your limbs and just have a bit of a laugh. Like, come on. Can you remember there was a very famous case back here in South Australia? And I'm very reticent to speak of bikies, but I will on this occasion. There were a couple of bikies that came across from Melbourne, right? And they were planning an attack with a bomb. However, what they did not do, 
because the bomb was in the car. Yeah. They did, what they did not do is factor in the time difference, the half an hour time difference oh, from no. Adelaide to Melbourne. <laughs> so said bomb went off while they were sitting in the car. Oh, jeez. Hey, what? Have you checked? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, there goes my arms and legs. <laughs> You're in <an> Eastern time. <laughs> That is an actual true story. Oh, oh my gosh. That is a true story. They were trying to take some people out and they took themselves out yeah. because they're like, oh, half an hour time difference. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's a really interesting result for Isn't those um, for those pioneers. <laughs> <laughs> Deary me. I remember back in the day when I first started working over, it was like 2012, and we did this little stunt where it was something to do with, it was a red light district or something, and it was about 12 of us on red mopeds. Mm. And if you do remember anyone, I mean, text us through, 0400 but we are cruising around the street promoting this thing. Yeah. Absolute carnage. There was a few stacks and all sorts of things. Yeah, right. And then one time I thought it would be really, really cool and funny to, at 7 o'clock in the morning, take all 12 of us through uh, my hallway of my rental place in Prospect. Oh, my God. So we all got through. Here we go. There we go. Everyone. Straight through the hallway, out the front, all 12 bikes. It was so funny. My housemates didn't know what was going on. <laughs> oh, Andrew's now, being a card again. Yeah, now look at the damage it did to the floorboards. <gasps> and look, the floorboards have to be replaced. And it's going to cost about three and a half grand. <gasps> and it's coming out of your bond. Yay! <laughs> I'm so funny. <laughs> I reckon my housemate spoke to me for about three weeks. Oh, my gosh. And would I change it? Absolutely not. Not for the world. Because I got to spend, I got to tell this story this morning. <laughs> Is that worth more than three and a half grand? Probably not. But here we are. Get around the Matildas. Yes, more of this, please. Cue the party. Wild scenes in Brisbane, me engine. Cue the party. <laughs> Can I ask some, something of the commentators? It's just a small thing. Like, when they're, for example, talking about Mary Fowler... We love her story. We love her story. <laughs> we, what a great story it is. Of course, everyone's familiar <laughs> with that story. No, I'm not! I don't know her story! Oh, and or, of course... Or you don't want to sound silly, so you're like, yeah, yeah, I'm familiar with the story, but, you know, just for fun, <laughs> refresh me. <laughs> I've done it with Cory as well the other night, and we're all across her journey to motherhood. No, I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm not. Am I the only one who's not up to date with all of their stories? <laughs> it's like this is a new. We're all learning. Yeah. Okay, so just just humorous. Yeah, just it's fine. Just for s and giggles. Just tell us their stories yeah, yeah. for fun. Hey, go on. You might yeah. feel like you're repeating yourself, but uh, <laughs> our um, information retention is not great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have been doing some research on the Matildas, though. Um, in particular, their hair accessories, Andrew. Right. And they mean a lot more than you might think. Okay, well, next time the comment I say, when they say, oh, have you any questions about their hair <laughs> accessories? We all know the story behind that. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be Jody Oddie that goes, well, I actually, actually do. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> So Hayley Rusto wears a, a, like a neat little yellow ribbon. Yeah. Um, and do you know why? No. Because when she first started playing football, her grandma would buy her a ribbon to match whatever outfit that she was wearing at the time for whatever club she oh, was that's playing nice. at. Isn't that cute? Yeah. And so when she was playing at um, Man City, she wore a sky blue one. Yeah. And then her ribbons have become so popular, it's inspired, inspired some children's books called Haley's Ribbon. That's really nice. Isn't that sweet? That's a beautiful story. Nice little story. And now, um, some of the players, including Ellie Carpenter, wear one of those sheer headbands yep. that you would think is a head accessory. A lot of the US players wear them as well. And I was like... I wonder what, what's the story behind them. They're not actually headbands. Mm -hmm. So basically the umpires said to the players, you can't wear any plastic clips or plastic headbands because they're dangerous. So they've adapted. It's not actually a headband. It's like a thin medical gauze known as pre-wrap that they use to wrap around the ankles and the knees um, before they strap it. Okay. So it's actually like a like it's not even a headband. So it's not holding the hair back? Yes. <laughs> so it isn't. Right, I'm just trying to work out what's going on here. <laughs> And are they doing it to spite the officials? Yeah, it's, it, it were, some of them are using it as like an expression of freedom. Like some of the oh. girl, one of the US girls wears a pink one because her mother had breast cancer. Like yeah, right. That, okay. so, so it's a bit of a freedom of expression thing. But yes, it does hold their hair back, That's Andrew. Good. Big fan of Ellie Carpenter as well. Good <laughs> Cowra girl. Yeah, good. Get, what? From Cowra in New oh, South Wales. Oh, but we all know, to, we all know the Cowra story, well, don't we? I used to go to the Cowra races. <laughs> Did you?
back in the day. <laughs> but also the other thing with those headbands, because they're different colours, um, they started wearing them so their friends and family in the stands could differentiate who they were and all that sort of That makes sense. Isn't that cool? Uh, growing up playing rugby, if you're wearing headgear, some people used to put different sort of colours or stripes on the headgear yeah. so you're more identifiable. Yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. Weren't they fun headband facts? Yeah, very nice. Um, so they will play the Tillies when they win tomorrow night against England. They'll play the final against either Spain or Sweden. That is on tonight on 7 Plus. So just tune in to 10 News First around 5 o'clock. Stick with us till about 6.30 and then you may switch to the soccer. Uh, how about Jody <laughs> Tell, <laughs> telling everyone to watch a, uh, uh, a channel that isn't the official supplier of the World Cup? That's okay. I love that. That's okay. That's we're, a little warm up. We're allowed to switch around. <laughs> You're allowed to get your news fixed first. So obviously tomorrow night as well, the FIFA fan site's going to be open. Yes. Which is going to be outstanding. Uh, and then if that fills up, which it absolutely will, mm. Memorial Drive is yeah. going to get a little gig. Well, I think they chose Memorial Drive as opposed to Adelaide Oval because it's got a roof and apparently yeah. there's supposed to be some rain on the way on Saturday. I'm looking at Abby. Maybe she could do a little bit of research in that instead of just sitting That is all it. correct, okay, thanks, Jody. Mate. Thank that, you. Well done. <laughs> that, Abby's just going to press this. <laughs> research done. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting to correct you, but you got all that right, so yeah. congrats. Yeah. Um, businesses around town as well, what are you doing uh, and what are you putting up? For example, North Adelaide Football Club, yeah. they've got a big screen, not Prospect Oval. Mm-hmm. They're going to show the game and they're going to open up the club and you can buy meals and eat on the Oval and all sorts of things. Oh, yeah. it's fun. So there you go. Go the Roosters. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So I see what you've done there. I've plugged 10 News first, so you're like, I'll just plug the Roosters in yeah. return. <laughs> I mean, it seems strange that I'd go in that direction, but yeah. So <laughs> if you're a business, get in touch with us, 0400 919 919. What are you doing specifically tomorrow night for the mm. Matildas? Trying not to have a heart attack is what we'll all be doing, yes. I think. Yes. We're, we're, we're in such a positive space. I know. I just... Losing isn't an option. But do you know what's exciting, though, Andrew Hayes, is that Sam Kerr has not scored yet in this World Cup. Yeah. So I feel like if she unleashes, then we're away. Yeah, absolutely. All right, businesses, get involved this morning. Our text line, get in touch, 0400 919 919. Plans for the Matildas v England. Go tell Oh, welcome, producer Zoe. Good morning. Hi. Hi. Uh, Hello. How are we feeling? How's everyone feeling? Yeah. How are you feeling, Jodes? A little bit tense. Yeah. But I'm trying to, I'm, like, I'm taking a new approach into this week where I'm just, like, super zen. It's okay. like, almost like I don't care. Yeah. Wow. If I win or not. <laughs> Just Almost not like bothered, it. Okay. you know. So if we're listening to some Jack Johnson tunes or Xavier <laughs> Rudd, yeah. it's going to be right up yeah. Joe's yeah. alley. Really She's chill. So zen Max and chill. chill. Yeah. And ben Harper. Yeah. 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 So this is how it works. So <laughs> we have taken Nova hits and we've orchestralized them. And Hazy and I have to guess which ones they are. Can you please, producer M, check that he's got nothing on his screens because I don't trust because he presses all the buttons. <laughs> he doesn't know what the songs are. Jodes, I promise this is all secret business. I press all the buttons. <laughs> See? <laughs> We're playing for two listeners today for a $100 pass to pass about. So, Hazy, you've got Sarah from Newton, who you're playing for. Yay, Sarah. Hello, how's it going? Yeah, welcome to the right side. I <laughs> uh, hope so. Uh, uh, and Jody, you've got Tana from Morphet Vale. Hi, Tana. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Jody. I believe in you. Yes. I need Thank it. you. I need it. You got this. Thank you. No, I, pr- I appreciate, good support like I that. appreciate your nice. confidence. Yeah. Uh-huh. Let's get straight into it. Kill the nerves. Song one, please. All right, here we go. Okay. Feels like a Pearl Jam song. Shut up. <laughs> That's a Jody. That's a Jody. What, what have you got, Jody? This, that is Ed Sheeran. Uh, Can't do this. We've, yes, we've can. spoken about this. This is Ed Sheeran, and it's um, Eyes Something. Three. No. no. Hazy, have you got an answer? No, I'll just keep on going here. Oh. So it is Ed Sheeran. Definitely Ed Sheeran. I didn't say oh, that. Yeah, so how come what? he's allowed to do it? I didn't say that. Hang on. Keep going. You didn't say it was? No, come on. Guess. Whispering me to come home. Wait for me to come home. No, buzz him out. Buzz yeah, buzz him out. <laughs> Photograph, Ed Sheeran. Photograph. Photograph. Yeah. Photograph. <laughs> I was actually nowhere near that. <laughs> really? <laughs> I was never going to get that. I was just going to punch out the chorus. Sorry about that, Sarah, but we're alive. Yeah. Yeah. We're still alive. It's all right. We're all still alive. Apologies to everyone who's in the car screaming at the radios because mm. we couldn't get the name yeah, right. Yeah, I'm I know. really sorry. Why is it so much? I swear it's easy to play along at home. It is, 100%. The it's too yeah, okay. much pressure here. Okay, well, nil all, but I reckon this one you should be all right. Song two, please. Okay, okay here we go. Oh! 
Okay. <laughs> Shut up. I can't concentrate when you do that. Hazy. Oh, that's a hazy. Run on a Lewis Capaldi. Song name? Uh, one that she loved. Oh, not quite. Jodie, have you got an answer? No, you can't add on from that. Lewis Capaldi. He used to be the one that you love. She just literally said yeah. the same thing. <laughs> <No. laughs> Someone you love. Here's the song name. <laughs> oh my gosh. Could we have a nil all draw? Oh, this is not the Give it to Hazy. <laughs> We've got one more song. Surely we'll get a winner Can from you, this one. Okay, no, I'm quite serious. Can you tell him to be quiet when the songs are playing? Right, Andrew, be quiet Another when the song's playing. <laughs> All it's right. okay. It's okay. One more opportunity. It helps me this. think, Jody. Okay. <laughs> well, that right. would be a first around here. Oh, oh, oh no, it's wow. tense. Song three. Let's go. Here we go. I'm shaking too. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, I do know this one. Stop. So. <laughs> hey, Zeke. Oh. oh. What have you got? Oh, I think we've got a bit of Ellie Golding. Song name? And love me like He's you do. Oh! Woo! Yes, baby! <laughs> yes, Sarah! We did it, Sarah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, good stuff. Joe, are we all right? Uh, good stuff. No. Hello, Joe. Thanks, Jody. Daisy. No, you're so welcome, Sarah. Thank you uh, for playing, Tana. Tana, did you call up first? I did, I called yeah. up. Uh, <laughs> hang on, so Tana called up first? Uh, Tana got Jody. No, I called up second. <laughs> okay, yeah, fair enough. Sorry, Tana. So. That's okay. What a change it. Thank you, Jody. Bless you. Bless Love you. your work. Love you, you too. Hey, Tana, Tana, are you sure you wouldn't change it? <laughs> I mean, you lost. <laughs> I wouldn't change it. Team Jody, all the way. Thank you, oh, Tana. Hello. Thank you. I just wonder, like, yeah. you wouldn't change it, but. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, you can stop carrying on now. All right. All right. That was fun, though. Yeah, yeah wasn't it? was it? almost a nil wasn't it? draw. It's, not it's, the... it's so fun when I'm trying to work out the song and all I can hear is yeah. you. Okay. I mean, not that we're keeping score, but it is now 4-2, Hazy. Okay, well, then perhaps, Jodes, we'll, we, we need to have a bit of a, a meeting mm-hmm. afterwards. Okay. Just to refine some of the rules, what you can and can't do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah, but even when you have rules, you, it goes out the window. Yeah. You ignore so them, true. mate. Thank that is you. so true. She ignores them. Oh. <laughs> I mean, you're not going to call up and we're going to go, that'll be $97.50, thanks for a family yeah. pass. I know, I mean, well, what is this? Yeah. We're not going to hijack the prices. No. We'll let the big dogs do that. We give them away for free. <laughs> hey, uh, let's talk Britney first up this morning. Of course. What's yeah, our Abby's, girl Brittany done? Abby spoke about this briefly in the news yesterday, <laughs> but I needed to revisit it. So whoever is controlling Britney Spears' Instagram needs to be fired and or shot. So <laughs> She's um, controlling her Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the issue. So basically she's wearing next to nothing like a tiger print G-string bikini and some genius decided to gift her a dancing pole and so she's basically pole dancing. In the Instagram video. Yeah, and it always looks like at the moment, I don't know if it's an age thing, but it always looks like she's had a huge night the night, night before. before. Yeah, yeah, she's got the eye makeup going on and Yeah. I don't want to sound disrespectful here, but it always kinda of looks always like she needs a shower. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? Well, I just feel like, how many kids she got? Three or four? If that was, oh, my God. Oh, Wouldn't mom. Really like moms? And they, oh, no. Kevin has just moved them to Hawaii. Has he? Yeah. Mm. Kevin Federline? Yeah. He Kevin seemed Federline. like the only sensible husband that she's had. Which is unbelievable in <laughs> he's itself. Now re- well, he's now remarried and, yeah, taken the kids as well. And the kids, because the kids have had enough, I think. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. K-Fed, the original artist who always looks like he needs a shower. Oh, wow. Okay, what is it with you and personal hygiene this morning? <laughs> I had a shower this morning. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling very <laughs> clean. feeling cocky. Yeah. <laughs> Juice. Juice. Uh, Let's talk about someone a bit more wholesome, and that's Pink. Of course. <laughs> So she's revealed the support act for her upcoming Australian Stadium tour. So, guess who it is? 
Um, I'll give you a clue. Ziggy Alberts. What? It's not Ziggy, is no. it? No. <laughs> Ziggy Alberts. Really? Oh. Ziggy Alberts. Uh, anyway, uh, it's uh, Tones and I. Okay. So she's going to be working. That's nice. That's good, isn't it? Makes a lot of sense. She's added two more shows to her tour, and this is her first time playing um, stadiums in Australia. So she's done tours before, um, but she's already racked up 725,000 ticket sales. Yeah, it's not bad, is it? That's unbelievable. So she's going to, at the Summer Carnival Stadium Tour, is set to stick... Kick off rather at Sydney's Allianz Stadium, February 9, Adelaide Oval, 27th of February. Um, and the two new tours that I spoke of, one in, one's at Melbourne's Marvel Stadium on March 13, and then they're going to Townsville. Yeah. It's, al- thunk it. it's almost like Townsville. Wow, they didn't see that coming, did they? <laughs> Just like Bendigo didn't see Post Malone coming. <laughs> 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 what about that? No, no Adelaide for you, but I'm going to go to Bendigo. Well, that is so random, isn't it? Super random. Do you know, I feel like Adelaide is the old. Like your, your your grandparents? What do you mean? If you want them to love you, you just got to visit them. Yeah, you just, <laughs> just got to come and see them. Just got to turn up. Yeah. Hey, Joe, before we move on as well, just mm. uh, coincidentally, Pink is our featured artist for Nova's uh, 100 Grand or 100 in the Hand this morning. So okay. when you hear a Pink song, you know what to do. Very nice. Mm. Hey, what about a surprise little guest at the Jonas Brothers tour? Jimmy Fallon no. jumped on stage. Um, so the Tonight Show host surprised everyone in New York City by walking on stage to sing the Killers rock classic, Mr. Brightside. Have a listen. No Jack Rewalt, but he's giving it a crack. Oh, speaking of Jack Rewalt, he's set to retire today. Apparently. Yeah, there you go. That's a shame. <laughs> he's an entertainer, isn't he, Jack? <laughs> he is an entertainer. Yeah. Who would have thought that Jack Rewalt would get a mention Jody's Juice? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Not I, me. Think I never even saw that coming. Sorry, I was just trying to link between. Uh, remember when Jack got up after the yeah. Killers in 2017? Yeah, and it was all like, oh, that was so impromptu. It actually wasn't. It was all planned beforehand. <laughs> it was all planned. Jack had said, can I please get on stage and perform with the Killers? That's true, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. so they gave him the green light. Yeah, mm. there we go. All right. Real good Jack Rewalt. What vibes for juice today? Yeah. And that's Jody's juice. As we've always said, the best way to finish Jody's juice <laughs> is with Jack Rewalt. Is with Jack Rewalt. <laughs> Are you telling me you built a time machine? Daisy's on this Daisy. The Tuesday edition of On This Daisy. Let's do it. Who wants to come along? Jump in the back. There's a spare seat. No, you don't need a seatbelt. It's fine. We're in the country. Oh, my God. No, we're in the country. We do things differently. Oh, please take that back. No, it's not. We're not on public roads. It's good. Oh. <laughs> things have changed. <laughs> yes. And it was the way back then. Not and anymore. Andrew is, of course, joking about not wearing a seatbelt. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't wear seatbelts on the, in the paddocks and stuff. Yeah, no. It's no. Okay. Different though. Mm. Um, 1989, on the 15th of August, Joe Jonas was born in Casa Grande, Arizona. Today is his 34th birthday. Congratulations to you, Joey boy. Joe was one of about seven or eight, I think. Yes. Um, mm. Let's do a quick pop quiz, so one for one. Famous sets of brothers. Ooh. I'll go first. Okay. The War Boys. The Maddens. Ooh, the Maddens. Mm. I like that. The Hemsworths. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, also, what other brothers are there? Handsome brothers. Oh, handsome. Pretty good. I'm going to say the Lopez brothers who, who? play in the NBA. Who? Oh, okay. Mm. Righto. Well, that's niche. Oh, okay. Is it? All right. Well, you can have that really hollow oh, victory then. Yeah. Go on. No, thank you very much. I'll take that. Um, I felt pretty good, actually. Yeah. And so, that's right. stuff. 1990, Jennifer Lawrence, born in Louisville, Kentucky. Today is her 33rd birthday. But I really am just a regular person. I don't get caught up in all the celebrity BS. I don't care that I've never been named People Magazine's most beautiful woman in the world. Or that Julia Roberts has gotten it five times. I think there'd be, like, some kind of limit. But this is fun. It's not much to not love about Jennifer Lawrence. God, when he made her, when I'm going to make her talented, I'm going to make her beautiful, and I'm going to make her quirky, and everyone's going to love her. I'm going to call her Jennifer. I shall, I shall <laughs> anoint her. I shall her. call her Jennifer. Jen- I'm going to call her the first name of um, a lady and the last name of a disgruntled male, <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> 2000 Tones and I, yeah. born in Mount Martha, Victoria. Today's her 23rd birthday. What? 23rd? So she was a 2000 baby. Tones and I was 23. Oh, oh my gosh. She's unbelievably successful and young. Oh, can you imagine having that much money that young? Oh my You'd be so sensible, wouldn't you? <laughs> 1955, Elvis Presley signed with Colonel Tom Parker. Tom Hanks played the Colonel in the Elvis movie. There are some who'd make me out to be the villain. 
of this here story. Let's don't let a good thing die. I got 10 minutes into that movie and thought, this is not for me. It almost had a good solid stint doing movies, didn't it? Yeah, it, it did. So yeah. you've seen some? Is oh, it good? No, no, well, no, they're all old movies, mate. Need to talk like this? Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, he does. He actually does. <laughs> oh, well good done. stuff. Number one song in August 15, 1995 was Waterfalls by TLC. <sighs> Oh, this is the theme song for a lot of disgruntled young girls back in the day during MySpace, oh, wasn't it? Yeah, it really was. Okay, chase some waterfalls, baby. Yeah, don't. Do not chase the waterfalls. Please, please, I implore you, stick to the rivers and the lakes that you used to. Is some big news coming out of Albertson? Yes, apparently Ken Hinckley has signed a contract extension at Port mm. Adelaide. There'll be a press conference today that you'll be attending, no doubt. Oh, I'm not registered to work today. Oh, yeah, aren't you? So there you go. I'll be watching from afar. Okay, so this is probably the biggest news to come out of Port Adelaide all year, and you're the Port Adelaide uh, football reporter, but yeah. you won't be there. Well, I will if I'm asked to work. I'll just have to rearrange a few things. I'm supposed to have sushi with Henry, my son, this <laughs> afternoon. I might have to push that back. <laughs> <laughs> bloody, bloody Ken, I, I, if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. The amount of time that man has interrupted sushi has yeah. just been extraordinary. Ken, can we do the press conference at <laughs> Well and Sushi Train? <laughs> <laughs> A big news coming out of Nova as well because this mm. is news reader Abby's last day before she jets off for a little holiday in Bali. Oh. Farewell, Abs. Goodbye. <laughs> 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 no, so I will sad. miss wow. you. Yeah. I haven't had a family at home, so you guys have like become my family. Oh, that's yeah, nice, oh, that's isn't it? So you know, nice. I get to see you every morning and then yeah. leave straight away. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, interesting, she didn't ask any of us to go with her. Yeah. Not even well, me. yeah, look, I love you, but I need space. You yeah, know what I'm like with people? Yeah. I, yeah, I can only handle a little bit at a time. Also, to, um, <laughs> I'm not buying you presents, sorry, because I'm on a budget. Oh, get us one of those real interesting uh, bottle openers, you know, that you get I in was, Bali. Yeah, Ooh. to be the honest, I think, yeah, I think I've still got one in my luggage somewhere that I haven't unpacked since I moved home, so I'll bring that in for you. Oh, we in your luggage classic yeah. when that comes up through the... Uh, can I have some fake Eve St. Rolent sunglasses, please? Yeah, yeah get, get me get. a Billabang T-shirt, please. <laughs> 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 you'll right. get a Billabang T-shirt and, yeah, you'll get a um, gouchy <laughs> yeah. bag. That nice. Works. Thank you, darling. Really appreciate that. Uh, it's been a big show. We've done it all. Thanks to What If What If It Is Aussie for Travel.